Shalom, Yasha Allah. It's the brother Mapathak. That'll be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And um, there's going to be a, a quick video. I want to go into this article, but I also want to play these videos. I'm going to play the video first, right? Showing um, um, what's been um, reported as thousands of, of cows just mysteriously um, 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 dead in Kansas, in Kansas, Salakia, right? It's thousands of cows, which I know a lot of reports say, say it's 3,000, right? This video here says it's 10,000, and I'm led to believe it's definitely more than 3,000, you understand? It's probably just an estimate that Esau kind of threw in the article, but I'm led to believe it's more than 3,000, you understand? And um, so it's as many cows that died in Kansas, right? And we can see through the spirit, this is Esau, right? Um, they're, they're putting... They're putting um, together this this famine, right? A man-made um, famine, you understand? And it's plain to see, right, to the spiritual man, right? Hey, Esau, Esau, their skirt is being lifted up in these last days, right? Even men that's not in this truth, they're kind of calling Esau out on their folly, right? Um, when you search about food processing plants, everybody is so onto Esau and making all these different blogs and all these different articles showing that it's obvious that Esau is trying to bring forth a, um, a famine, right? So when you search how many food processing plants have been burned in, in 2022, it's a bunch of them Esau folly fact checking websites that says fact check. No, um, the government is not is not putting together a, a um, is not trying to cause a food shortage, right? They got to make all these damn fake fact check sites back them up. Right. And only a fool is going to go into them fact check sites and be like, OK, it says fact check. That's definitely true. We don't. Hey, hey, Esau, we don't believe that, man. Right. Esau is being exposed in these last days. The man of perdition is being exposed in these last days. Right. Even um, Edomites don't even trust Esau in these last days, man. Right. Their own people don't trust them. Their own people are damn protesting against them. Right. Their own people didn't want to take that damn um, um, jump shot, man. Right. So we can see what days we're living in, right? But um, before I go too far off the topic, right? I want to jump into this video. And before we go into it, I want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's all praise and honor and glory unto the Most High God whose name is Yahweh and the name of his only begotten son who the world would ignorantly call Jesus Christ. But we know him as Yahweh Shai in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. So let's play this video real fast. See that? And in the video, you see all this dead cattle. And um, and, and if you were reading the captions, it was saying um, some people said it was because of the heat, but it wasn't overly hot. Right. So that's a false. That's and, and that's what you see on most of the articles that you read about this situation. They're they're blaming it on, on a heat wave. But hey, they say it wasn't overly hot, man. Right. And I'm, I'm led to believe that that's true, that it wasn't overly hot. Right. It says another um, theory was like bovine um, disease, some of that sort. Right. And it says nobody really knows why. Right. It's Esau. You understand the same thing that happened with the um, it was, it was um, millions of, of turkeys and chickens that died to the so-called bird flu. You understand? That's the same thing Esau did to those birds. They're putting and they're doing experience on the um, Salakia experiments. Right. And they're putting these animals to death to bring forth a food shortage, to bring forth a, a famine. Like never seen before in America, right? And um, and really, it's 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 all of the Lord because Esau is the Lord's sword, right? So even though Esau are doing these things, it's the Lord putting on their spirit to make these things come to pass. You understand? We're living in the last days, right? And um, I had a, it was a the um the Jermatria, right? I, I forgot exactly what his name was, but as we were going to camp on Jefferson, and he said he was he was kind of scoffing against the Bible. 
right? He said, um, do you think it's more or less just um the so-called white man trying to trying to do these things on purpose so that he can say the Bible is real or whatever whatever he was saying? He was saying something along the, the lines of, okay, I see his Bible prophecy. Do you think the white man just read the Bible and tried to make the prophecies come to pass? When really, that's that's just not true, right? Because if the, if the so-called white man had that much power, he wouldn't need to, to to he wouldn't need order out of chaos just to get order. You understand, right? And really, we believe and we know through the spirit, right? As spiritual men, right? We know that the Most High God, um, he's in control of everything, right? The so-called white man can't just read the Bible and say, okay. Now we're going to make this come to pass, right? Hey, the, and, and the, if the so-called white man wrote the Bible, why couldn't they just make Yahweh Shai, right? So-called Jesus Christ, um, description in the Bible be that he's white so that it matched their picture, right? So when we say that Esau is bringing forth this famine, understand it's still, it's still all in the power of the Most High, but the Most High is throwing, doing it through Esau. When you read about us going into Babylonian captivity, it, it, uh, the Lord calls Nebuchadnezzar his servant, you understand? Because he was having Nebuchadnezzar bring these plagues upon our people, right? He was doing it through that man, but really it was all of the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar was the Lord's servant, right? And it's the same thing with Esau. It's the same thing with Esau. Esau is the Lord's sword. And Esau is the vessel being used by the Lord to bring these things to pass, right? So we just, um, I'm going to go into this article as well. Go to the article, right? So this is newsweek.com. It says, Shocking footage of thousands of dead cows has a real, real fast. Let's get the precept just in case, um, just for edification's sake, right? So this is um, Psalms for the 17 and verse 3, and it reads, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, right? So the wicked, which is the so-called white man in the scriptures, is the Lord's sword, meaning the Lord uses them to bring forth judgment. And that's what we see happening with the food shortages. This is Esau killing all these different animals and burning down these different processing plants to bring forth a famine in these last days. And let me see if I can find this other preset. Lord willing, I could spell um, damn Nebuchadnezzar's name correctly, right? Um, come on, I'll pray to the Mosai. Right, so this is Jeremiah 27 and verse 6. This is the back of what I was saying. Just to give the edification, right? It says, and now have I given all these lands into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, right? And and how much more today? Didn't the Most High God give the land into the hands of um, Esau, right? Uh, all the fatness thereof. That was his blessing. To um to His blessing was to swore and to have the land and all the fatness thereof, right? Uh, roughly paraphrasing. And it says... And given, so like, I'm going to read that again. It says, and now ha have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And who is the king of Babylon today? It's Esau, right? It says, and the beasts of the field have I given also to serve him, right? And so like, I kind of missed the point. Bear with me. I'm going to read it again from the top. It says, and now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, right? So that's really the point I wanted to get was that. Um, the same man that the Most High God used to bring us into captivity in, in, in um, the Babylonian times, right? And to bring these different plagues upon us, right? It was, um, it was, it was uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And the Lord called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. So that's the same thing today with Esau. Esau will be a servant of the Lord to bring past these, these plagues. Because you read about in Baruch 2 that the plagues that happened when we were, when we were in um, Babylonian captivity... Were the worst plagues that ever happened under the under the sun, right? That's in Baruch chapter two, I believe, right? But the point is, yes, Esau is the Lord's servant. I just had to get that to prove what I was going into, so nobody won't kind of get confused and say, "Oh, I thought, but I thought Israel was the only service of the Lord." What is what is he talking about? He's going off. No, you have to understand, right? These men are are being used by the Lord, right, to do certain things, right? So, but um, I want to go back to the article. And I'm going to read this again from the top from Newsweeks.com. It says, shocking footage of a thousand dead cows has emerged on TikTok during an intense Kansas heat wave. Right? Let's watch the video real fast. <laughs> and these are different cows. Right? The first one, we saw black cows. So it's a, it's, it's a lot of cattle dying. <laughs> Fowler, you see, 
Sun so dot hole. See that, and it's happening all throughout Kansas. And it says the TikTok video posted by Barbie Doll Henderson, 1973, shows a thousands of cattle lying dead across the ranch. News we cannot verify that the deaths were related to the heat wave or where and when the video was taken, but extreme temperatures have been seen across the southeast of the state in recent days. And it says, according to the video of which a caption read 3,000 cows die over the weekend in um, Kansas, the rancher had no idea why so many cattle had died. It says, on June 13th, temperatures reached 108 Fahrenheit in South Southwest Kansas. Presidents of Royal Weather Inc. Drew Limmer told Reuters, the heat has been so extreme in part of the state that many areas were under a heat advisory in recent days. This coming weekend may see temperatures nearing 110 degrees, and this can continue to have a severe, severe effects on the state's cattle. It says Matthew Lara, a spokesperson, Kansas Department of Health and Environment, told Reuters that at least 2,000 cattle have died due to high temperatures and humidity as of June 14th. The 2,000 figure comes from facilities that are helping ranchers dispose of the dead bodies. It says cattle struggle to um, acclimatize, so lock it for pronunciation. It says to the sudden change in temperatures. Scarlett Hagen spoke per. I kind of know. I kind of want to get um, see if there's any more um. <laughs> Meat we could get off the bone in here. Um, I'm gonna start from here. It says it's going to be oppressively hot and stressful for the animals. Learner told Reuters, "Mass deaths such as this are a blow to the state's cattle industry, which is one of the biggest in the U.S. after those in Texas and Nebraska, right? So Kansas have one of the biggest cattle industries, right? And it says according to Reuters." There has been added pressure on the industry recently following rising feed costs triggered by supply chain issues amid Russia's Ukraine invasion. There are an estimated 6.35 million cattle in Kansas. The state also has a large influence in the cattle processing sector, according to the Kansas Department of Agriculture. All right. Right. And um, if you want to kind of get into that, that um, article, it's on Newsweek.com. But that's pretty much the point I wanted to touch on. Right. It's thousands on thousands of, of cattle, right, of cows, right, that, that, that pretty much died in Kansas, right, due to who knows what, right? And we know what through the spirit, but the world is kind of confounded. They don't know whether if, if it's of heat, some type of disease, right? Uh, they don't know what's going on, right? And I'm going to kind of search this up real fast. Um, Kansas. So I guess it is getting pretty hot out there. Also, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess it pretty, it pretty is, it's, it is pretty hot out there, right? But you have to understand, Esau can even do that. Esau can, can make it super hot, man. Right? So even if it is the heat that's killing the cows, you still can't put it past Esau. Right? <laughs> right, so it says the last time that Kansas was in um, triple digits in the, in the weather, it says it will be, um, it was since 2018. So lock here. I don't think it shows exactly what um the exact city and state, right? Because that's what I'm I'm I want to know. Let me see, Kansas cows dead. I need to find an article that shows the exact um. Yeah, it doesn't show it. So like, hey, bro, with me. Um, it just says Kansas. Um, it's all good, right? I want to go to this other article, though, because I, I spoke about it. I want to bring it out. 
So check this out. Check this out. So when you Google, because I just wanted to um to kind of tie these things together, it says I Google how many food processing plants fires in 2022, right? And the first thing that pops up in the top left, top stories, it says this 95 item list doesn't prove there are ongoing plans to create food shortages. All I'm trying to do is find out how many damn um food processing plants were destroyed. And the first thing that's popping up is a fact check about whether or not um it's plans to, to create food shortages. Because the thing is, that's exactly what Esau is doing, right? So Esau is trying to put these, these different things on Google to try to lead you astray, right? And so lucky, when you read on, when I scroll down, it says, So like it was another one I seen. Yeah, see, check this out. This is um WCNC.com, right? So they got all these fact checking and um, verify um websites. It says no fires at food processing plants have not been set intentionally. You see that? Why? All I'm trying to do is see how many how many fires there were. But yet they have all of these fact check websites saying no, it's not happening on purpose. No, no, no one is trying to create a food shortage. But that's exactly what Esau is trying to do. So we have to be aware in these last days. And um, and Esau is our greatest enemy, man. Right? And they're wicked. And Salakia, I want to get this real fast. I'm going to get a couple precepts and close out. Is it, do I want 2 Thessalonians? Bear with me. It might be 2 Thessalonians. Um, Con, this is what I want. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And who is that son of perdition? That man of sin. That's that's Esau, man. Right? The, the self-proclaimed um white man, right? It says, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called the most high. And that's what he does. He opposed and exalted himself above all that is called the most high, or that is worship. So that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. And when you look around this world, it's only one nation of people who, who portrays himself as their God on this earth, right? And that's why you know in the, in the spirit, they represent that king of Babylon. They represent Nebuchadnezzar in the spirit because that's what Nebuchadnezzar felt like. He felt like he was a God on the earth. And it's the same thing with the so-called white man today. And it says, um, and that's all I pretty much wanted. I'm going to read verse 4 again. It says, who opposeth and exalteth himself, it says, above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as the Most High sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. And that's what the so-called white man does. They show themselves that they are the Most High, right? They got their face all over the money. They got um, cameras everywhere you go, right? You got you got reports of brothers being recorded while they're on a damn laptop, man. You got a lot of people that will tell you their television has a camera in it, Right? This is Esau. Esau gives you a social security card, right? He wants to give you credit cards, identification cards. Um, if, if somebody passes away, you have to get a death certificate from Esau, right? If you want to get married in this world, in this society, you have to get a, um, a, um, a marriage license from Esau, right? And that could go on and on and on and on, man, right? They think that they're the gods of this earth, right? But they're going to be destroyed, right? And their, skirts is, their skirt is being lifted up in these last days, Everybody knows what Esau is about now, right? And we all know that um, the Lord is using Esau to bring forth this food shortage. You understand? And um, let's go get the classic and then I'm going to close out. Because a famine has to come to pass. It's, it's prophecy in the Bible, right? So this is Matthew 24 and um, verse um, 7, 6. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, right? And we see these things coming to pass. We see the we hear the, of the wars and the rumors of wars, right? In verse seven, it says, "For nation shall rise against nation," right? And we're we see the um that we're on the brink of a way, of a race war, right? It says, "And kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, right, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places." And the main point I wanted to touch on is famines, right? It's going to be famines. In verse 8, it says, and all these are the beginning of sorrow. So that, yes, that's what we're living in. We're living at the beginning of sorrows, right? And I know I said I was going to get one more, but through the Spirit, um, I want to get this too, right? Because we're living in the beginning of sorrows. Um, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse 13. It reads, 
This is not what I want. I want 18. It says, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings. The beginning of famine, right? And that's what we're living in. We're living in the beginning of famine, right? The beginning of famine, right? And great death. That's what we're living in. We're living in the time of the beginning of famine and the beginning of sorrows and the time of the beginning of great mourning, the beginning of great death, man. Right? We're thinking we're seeing a bunch of death on the earth right now. Hey, just give it, just give it, um, hey, man, just give it, just, let's, let's look at how different the world is going to be in the next year or two, right? Let's just say that. Well, let's see how, how different the world is going to be in the next year or two, man. Right? And it says, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils, what shall I do when these evils shall come? Right? And that's plain. That's what we're living in. The beginning of sorrows, the beginning of great mourning, the beginning of great famine, the beginning of um the beginning of great death. You understand? The beginning of wars, right? We can see hey, we see, hey the Bible is so real, man. It's the words of the Lord. Right? Kalah Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And Lord willingness is edifying uh, to the um the mighty Akyon Wa Akwata tune in and listen to the words of the Lord. Lord willing, I got the understanding thereof, right? Hey, we're on the brink of a famine, right? And, it, and it's prophesied in the Bible. We love to go to Matthew 24 and show the, the rumors of wars and nation against nation. And we just kind of read over that famine, right? But that, hey, that famine, is, we're on the brink of that famine. That famine is, hey, that famine is here, man, right? The spirit of famine, right? The Lord, you read about that in Sirach 39. The Lord had these different spirits for, for vengeance. And one of those spirits are famine. And that spirit is on the earth, man, right? The spirit of famine is on the earth, right? And um, I want to say, Kala Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Shalom Yasha Allah.